Hey, this is Doug from Flascale Models. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to carve rock work out of plaster. Okay, so while uh, the glue gun is heating up, um, we've got this one piece that's carved here um, that's going into the water. And what we're gonna do is have a seawall here later, so we're gonna leave a little bit of space there. I'll keep that in mind, just so it's easier to, to get this in later. And I've cut this on the bandsaw. You can certainly cut it with a box cutter as well. Um, but this will be just a little piece that's bridging this piece to this piece so it doesn't look so flat like that. This just looks a little unnatural. This looks like it came up out of the ground a bit and uh, is kind of settled this way. So we can make it feel a little bit more at home. Cutting a little bit more off. Okay, so I've mixed some hydrocal here and you can see it's kind of a um, peanut butter consistency. So there's no real formula for this. Just mix in enough until it gets kind of thick. Now this looks pretty awful. Um, it looks like a big blob, which is fine. But this is just the first pass. Then we have to let this dry a little bit and start setting. We want to make sure we coat most of the pink foam and we kind of want to put a thick layer on because when we start cutting into this and making some um, negative spaces and, and cracks and stuff, we don't ever want to see the pink. Okay, this is at a uh, nice stage where we want to start working with it. You can see it's kind of, it's wet, but it's, it's, it's thick like clay, which is just what we wanted. And now the goal is to get rid of all these curved surfaces that make it look like a blob. I'm doing that with a palette knife. So once you start working uh, the rock work, you wanna introduce some areas of movement. And by that, I mean areas where the rock has moved over time. Like this plane right here was probably level with this, but now it's settled a bit uh, so we've dr dropped it. That's, you can do that by simply pushing it down with your knife, and we can emphasize this later with um, some fine cracks once it dries a little bit more. Okay, now it's... Uh, it's really setting up this plaster. Um, you can see the knife doesn't sink into it as much anymore, the palette knife. So now it's pretty much working with just my X-Acto knife. And I'm gonna start taking away even more material with the flat of the blade to get all the bumps out now. First we got our blobs out, and now we want all these little rough ridges gone. And if you take too much away, like I can see some pink foam there, uh, of course we can just always add plaster later. It's not a big deal. But you see the separation that's happening between this plane and this plane. This section's lower. So again, we've got more movement built into the story of these rocks. Another handy tool to have with you is a cheap chip brush. This will get rid of all the debris. Not only will it get rid of the debris, it actually kind of rounds over the edges while the plaster is still kind of soft and workable. Now we're working on 
the top of this rock uh, surface here. Again, I'm getting rid of all my little ridges, everything that makes it look like it was cake frosting. And if anything remains that we don't like, um, keep in mind that we will be putting scenery over this, so you can always hide it with some vegetation, some plants, grass, whatever, dirt. So I'm still in the subtraction phase of this, where I'm removing some material here and there to give the rock some definition, some movement, some history. It's very easy to want to make lots of cracks and I would say uh, especially if you're starting this uh, I've only done it a few times a few is much better uh, I've got one crack here and I've got one that kind of takes off on its own and fades away and I've got this junction where they meet more likely this is going downhill so you've got ice and water going down the crack settling and it kind of start to erode here and take a, take a divot of material out and you can go even further by slicing away this side of the crack. Again, now there's there's some separation in the rock, so it just makes it more interesting looking and more defined and a little more natural. Uh, you don't want to do a crisscross of rock cracks, just a few. Like this, this whole area here, which is about uh, two by two inches, that's plenty, and even over here, uh, I probably will do one more. We've got this little bit of um, divoting here and some, some some removal of material that's already happened on its own. But that's a good place to start a crack. And these little moments will kind of guide you as to where they should go. And again, I'm going to subtract a little bit on one side of the crack to make this separation a little more defined. Okay, so now we've got our uh, we've got some more blob removal work to do. We're taking the flat of our blade and scraping it away. Okay, so now we're going to apply a wash here, and you can use uh, alcohol and ink or uh, driftwood from Hunterline, but I'm going to try this new stuff from Best Trains. This is a, their Vatero uh, Solutions line. This is Shadow Gray. It's an alcohol-based ink wash, and with a big brush, I can start to see what my rock looks like. And this won't necessarily be the final color of the rock. Uh, but a base coat. And now we can see all the work we did on our cracks is uh, showing through. So I've got a few colors of acrylic paint here. I've got a dark gray, a tan, a black, and a uh, linen color, which is really a concrete color. Uh, it's Woodland Scenics concrete. Um, but of course rocks come in every color you can think of. They're purple rocks, orange rocks, red rocks, blue rocks, you name it. But um, to be safe, we go with browns and grays and blacks. Um, you want to, if you're if you're trying to model a local area, use some reference photos to match the color. 
And then whatever the base color is, I first do a dry brush of that. I'm not painting every crack because I want to preserve the dark cracks that have shown up from the ink wash. But this particular color is a little too violet for me, for what I want to do. So I'm using this concrete uh, kind of off-white color. And I'm dry brushing and just hitting all the, the edges and surfaces to highlight them. So I'm going to try a darker wash on top of what I've done. Uh, this is uh, also part of the Vetero line. This is murky brown. And I just I think I need something darker to start with. And that's what's good about this. You can apply many colors to it. If you don't like the color, you can change it as you go, and it will just add to all the layering, and it'll just give it more depth. So you're in no danger of uh, coloring it too much. And a lot of the plaster, the color will be absorbed by the plasters anyway. So while it's still kind of sopping wet, I'm just kind of blotting it with a towel. And it may be hard to see on camera, but it gives it a nice mottled uh, coloring in some of the areas because it's leaving more of the color in the back where the towel won't reach. And in some areas it's taking it clean away, which is nice. So it's always good to just experiment with this kind of thing and see what happens. Do you see the effect that that's making where it's taking off the wash, but it's taking off the layers of paint as well, but then leaving some of it here. So I've got this light gray, this dark gray, this grayish blue. And it's a nice way to get um, a real rock-like finish. Uh, this is a little HO Prizer figure since I'm working in HO, and every now and then it's it's a good idea to get a little dude and stick him in here, and just to see how your your rocks look to scale and compared to a uh, human figure. Okay, so now I'm at this stage again where I can do some dry brushing. Uh, we want to make sure your your wash is completely dry or dry enough that it doesn't uh, mix with the dry brush. And I'm just highlighting the edges. So I've got my uh, weathering powder out. And I'm just using a gray. This is a light gray. Let me show you that here. This color here. And a couple of spots. Just dust it on a little bit. Especially in the undercuts of the rock to make even more shadow. And on the back here where there's, there'll be dirt eventually, I'm gonna do a little lighter brown to help that blend in a little better, better later. So I've made a little muck wash here, and I've used uh, murky brown from Best and some black paint. And I've just kind of mixed it a little bit so I can get a muck wash for the bottom where the low tide would just leave this slimy muck as it does here in our uh, depiction of a canal in New York in the 70s. And the low tide always leaves a gray, murky slime. We're only coming up a little bit. Maybe it's a half an inch. Uh, to show that the tide's gone out a bit. And the next thing we can apply here is an algae line, which is, which lives just at the top of the mud line, but overlaps it a little bit. So you wanna kinda just draw your line, or trace like you've done before with this moss deposit. This is enamel base, so I'm thinning it with, uh, got a tub of turpentine here. I'm letting it bleed a bit. 
So when you have something this wet, you want to let it dry and then go back to it because uh, it's hard to tell how much you need, if you need more or less. So we're going to just stop while we're here and let it dry. Okay, so we've let our uh, low tide wash dry and we can see where we need to either go back or, or change it a little bit. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to dry brush a little bit more to grab some of these edges and highlight them. I'm using that concrete color again. When you're dry brushing, you're always taking off about 98% of the paint, a good amount. See how we could just hit the, the edges. Okay, now we need some uh, vegetation in the cracks here. So we're going to start with uh, flock and turf. And this is a farm pasture blend. You can get it at Scenic Express. And it's a combination of polyfiber and uh, foam. You can see it here. And to apply it, I'm going to take some white glue. We use Aileen's Tacky Glue. Uh, it's, it's nice and thick and dries kind of fast. Dries clear. And we'll start by putting some greenery in the cracks of the rock where it would probably grow first. And with a tweezer, just drop it on your spots of glue. Probably a little more than you need, so you cover all the glue. You could even press it in the glue a little bit. And then use some air to blow it away. For this next step, you want to get some prairie tufts. This is little tufts of grass on a sheet that you could pull off. Comes in every color you can think of, every size. Uh, and then this is a pull apart grass. You could just pull these away. And then this is a more of a textured kind of grass with some big leaf material. Now you don't want to do this without at least three types of material. Um, just because that's how nature works. Usually if you look into some vegetation out in the in the grass or, or on the side of the highway or the side of the railroad, there's probably 20 different kinds of vegetation. Now, 20 is a lot, but we can sort of fake it with at least three or more. So I'm picking up this prairie tuft, put it in some glue, and then plant it. And sort of use the same cracks as before where this particular plant would grow as well. Another item we like to use is um, leaf litter, also from Scenic Express. It's ground up uh, leaves, actual dry leaves. Um, it's kind of ground up for O scale at this scale, but if you grind it in your fingers, you can kind of grind it down to a smaller size that works for HO. And it just adds a, a bit more texture and a, a little bit more of a color shift to tone down some of the green, the bright green stuff. Um, and, and also it gives it some more scale. Another reason to have a little dude like that around when you put them next to the leaves and the bushes, you can sort of see if you're on the right track. Okay, that's about it for our rock section here. Uh, you can see I've painted most of this black, and that's just to uh, make things a little bit more, uh, a little bit less chaotic when you're working in the area as you go. Uh, still to be done here, I'm gonna put some dirt here, it'll be a road, and eventually we'll be pouring this water, and that'll be in a future video. 
so give this a try. It's pretty simple with a little practice. And uh, thanks for watching. And be sure to subscribe to the channel so we can keep making more of these videos. Thanks.